Hello, 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 and welcome to this review of Love, Love Extra. This is a visual novel series widely acclaimed among its fans and critics. I recently saw a Kickstarter-driven release in the West, and I recently finished the first entry in the trilogy, Extra, on my channel. Technically, the combination of Muv Love Extra and Muv Love Unlimited makes up a singular title called Muv Love, but these two are definitively different beasts. They are even considered the first two parts in what is called the Muv Love Trilogy. While I will do a full review of the entire title once I finish Unlimited, for now I will offer a quick discussion on the merits of the first outing by itself, so those who don't want to know anything about Unlimited but are interested in the first one can do this and listen to this. Keep in mind, this is a visual novel in a very traditional sense. If you're unflexible enough that, even if you're not a fan of the genre, that you don't even think you can enjoy minimal gameplay to complement the story, then it's not going to be for you. It's just the nature of the genre itself. Muffle Up starts by describing basically the relationship between Takuru Shiragane and Samika Kagami, a childhood friend who get along just maybe a bit too well. Wait, before you, wait, 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 before you jump into the abyss, hear me out. Another girl called Maya shows up to throw that life into chaos, declaring her unbreakable bond with Takaru. She implants a sense of absurdity into the entirety of the situation with her vast amounts of wealth and naivete as she implants herself into Takaru's life. From there, everyone's lives gets turned upside down as they try to work through what they want from each other and life in general. Wait, 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 seriously, wait. I know it can sound extremely cliche based on the premise alone. You have the childhood friend and the rich, naive girl, but that might be what's so impressive. Wait, wait, no, let me explain, let me explain. What Marvel of Extra does so well is execution. And if you're still here, then really, you're willing to give that a chance. If you can sit back, let yourself be charmed by characters, turn off your brain just a little, and enjoy the atmosphere it creates, then it's a great blast of a time. I only say turn your brain off a little, because the outing isn't terribly shy with the cliches and really isn't back away from them either. However, the characters are written like real characters. They aren't cardboard cutouts of these cliches that they will ultimately remind you of. In fact, I'd say that, in a sense, each and every part of them, even the cliche parts, feel like it really is brought about from their actual character, from their actual three-dimensional personality, even if it does have cliche elements to it. There's a sense of depth here that really only rises as you delve further into the water. And this is really only enhanced by the storytelling mechanism it employs. To note, I speak solely of my experience with the official Steam release from 2016. Extra had been released previously, not in the West, but it had used a different presentation style. So this new release basically uses the engine and presentation style that, as I am told by multiple people, was used for the final outing of the trilogy, Alternative. It removes the whole text box part of visual novels in favor of a subtitle style dialogue, and the camera work, even from the typical first person perspective of a visual novel style, feels dynamic. It does a ton to make the world feel much more alive and immersive. Admittedly, I played through this on my channel and I voiced Taku all the way through, so that might have helped a little bit in the immersion as well. Mind you, I'm not saying it's perfect or anything of that sort. But the main story is very, very interesting, aka the Samika and Maya routes that the two girls I was basically talking about in the premise. The other routes premises drops most of the initial setup in favor of mildly interesting side stories that are sort of kind of hard to get invested into. I mean, I like the characters, I, well, I like most of the characters. That's a, that's a story for another day. But them alone is just straight not enough to make me interested in those routes alone. The actual stories from what I've seen of them just deviate too much from the initial setup that you don't have that initial backing to get invested in it, to have that time to actually do it. They just sort of throw you into a new conflict and it's just sort of there. And while the characters, when they're interesting, they're still going to be interesting. The side stories themselves aren't amazing. Mind you, I didn't go through all of them. I didn't go through all the side stories. You can probably figure out which ones I did by just looking at the playlist of my uh, playthrough. It is what it is. I will note, just, just because of what I was talking about there, it lost a lot of momentum for me in the parts I did do, and I'd say that's a, probably not the biggest downside, so you'd have to really, really love this to go through the other ones, or you just want to be a completionist and see everything, which is fine too if you have the time, and if you really want to do that, then that's fine. But I really do recommend the main routes of Samika and Maya, because those are very good, and even from a story perspective, they are pretty enticing and very well written. I will also note that this was originally released with the intention of being an H game. This release is not an H game. This is what they call the all ages version. For visual novels, that's typically what they do. Uh, what does an H game really mean if you're not familiar? Well, it means it's perfectly willing to be pornographic. This includes some really cringeworthy 
sex scenes? Uh, let's call them sex scenes. Unfortunately for me on the channel, just going through it, speaking through everything, I can just skip them, even though they were censored and not directly stated as such. It just made it just more and more awkward and cringeworthy. So if you have an issue with that, you can skip those. They're like one per route and, uh, God, those were cringeworthy. <laughs> Almost painful, actually. But uh, that sort of relates to the idea that this isn't for everyone. Like I said before, visual novels are a genre that you need to know what to expect before jumping in. It's very anime too. Sort of like just relaxing in a good slice of life anime at times. But overall, I really enjoyed it and would definitely recommend it even as a solo outing. If you've never heard of the series before, I'm totally supposed to get even better and better as it goes into Unlimited and then into Alternative with very different styles of story than the slice of life style romance present here. You can figure it out. You do probably don't want to look at precisely what changes because if you don't know, then the change will be better for you. It will be probably be more interesting as I have gone somewhat into Unlimited at this point. So fingers crossed as I take on both of those in the near future as I'm doing Unlimited now and eventually Alternative. For now, if you like these sorts of experiences or just think it sounds sort of interesting, I'd say at least add it to your wish list. So that's all I have for today. So hopefully this gave you a good perspective on what I think of it. Hopefully this gave you a good idea of whether you'd want to try it if you haven't or tell you if you liked it as much as you have by getting that good old confirmation bias. <laughs> Otherwise, either way, whatever, you enjoyed this, hopefully you did. I'll see you all next time. Drive safely, everyone.